Okay, what's up guys? Um, do another video here. This is something that's happened twice this week, and uh, it's happened many times in the past, and I think it's worth going over, because this is an example, really good example, of how fundamentals can turn a like C-level setup, or setups like you wouldn't even think of trading, into like super A+. -plus. Um, crazy fade setups. So I kind of covered two of these examples in videos before, but two new examples came up today or this week, and um, I'm going to go into a lot more detail than the ones I did before. Uh, but so this is a um, ATM short, so stocks that have an at the mar market offering, which we see right here, um, which is a form of dilution. So uh, Dilution, uh, especially when dilution is in the money, um, is extremely bearish, obviously, because um, when a company is diluting, obviously, they are increasing their float. So they're selling brand new shares that have never been on the market to the market. Um, and also it's pure selling pressure, right? They're selling brand new shares, which means they didn't have to buy it at the bottom of the chart and sell it higher. They're just releasing new shares to the public. So. Um, any form of dilution is super bearish, and then uh, at the market is especially super bearish um, because at the market offerings essentially mean they can release a certain amount of shares um, at any time they want, um, as long as they don't fall under certain restrictions, which we'll talk about in this video. Um, but I wanted to talk about it because at the market offerings, um, Really ideal at the market offering shorts often happen in the pre-market. Um, they often don't even survive in two until market open. Sometimes they do. I do have an example in here that does. Um, but essentially, uh, an at the market offering short plus low volume. So low volume is really key. I actually have a fifth example that I just thought of of companies that have an ATM, but their volume is so crazy high that. Uh, the ATM can have like a short-term effect, but if the volume's high enough, it can reverse even with a, you know, a 50 million, 100 million ATM present. So uh, it doesn't mean you could just automatically short it. Um, it also doesn't mean you could just short it anywhere you want. Uh, and it also doesn't mean every single one isn't, it's not, they're all not gonna fade as hard as the ones I'm about to show you, right? It just depends on the fundamentals, the dilution, if they're able to use the ATM, the price action that came before the ATM, um, all that stuff. Apparently my mic says I'm kind of loud. I'm gonna turn myself down a little bit. Maybe this is better. I don't know, you let me know. Um, I just know a lot of my early videos are super quiet. So I try to turn up my volume on my mic and it might be too loud. So we'll see. I'll probably post this regardless. <laughs> um, okay, so ATM shorts, uh, four examples. Let's start in chronological order um, with MNPR. So, oh, by the way, I'm making this during the middle of the day because Thinkorswim's all messed up right now. The data is like two or three minutes behind, or they actually might have fixed it regardless. Um, I kind of stopped trading for today. So, uh, made some good money in the morning, and now we're in the kind of, you know, mid middle of the day kind of like there could be some good long situations here not super many good short, short situations between like 11 o'clock to like two o'clock um often super trappy uh main reason actually is because if a stock is still up and doing like mrn this is actually an example we're going to go over today of, of an atm short that somehow i don't know if this is just some crazy algo we have some crazy algo manipulation going on in the past couple weeks um tons of just tons and tons of volume in the, in micro cap spaces and which is just causing extremely weird price action all over the place but let's not worry about that right now um mnpr talked about this in an old video um what day was it this day yes so this is actually an example of an atm short that survived until market opened, and the reason it survived is because it didn't go up until 9.25. Um, this is actually one of those shorts where it's like, even without the ATM, it's really ideal price action. <laughs> well, not super ideal, but um, most of the time when a stock goes up extremely, extremely strong at market open, pushes and then hard cracks, it pretty much dies, even without an ATM. 
an ATM is interesting in this case because you get almost no bounces when you have an ATM that's being tapped with pretty low volume. Like this is only really hitting 300 shares a minute. It's at 10 to $12. So that's, you know, a little higher than what we're used to, but, um, but really it's, it's minimal volume and with heavy dilution that's being tapped, um, it goes straight down. You, you have to uh, slam market orders on, uh, you know, if it's after 9.30 and you have like a huge dilution play, um, market order is a good way to go. But I kind of want to go over fundamentals, just how to kind of read through this stuff. Because um, a lot of people get confused. So I use BAM SEC. By the way, there's a lot of new kind of services out there, like Flash SEC or Dilution Tracker that track a lot of this stuff for you. Um, that stuff's awesome. They're great tools. Uh, I do recommend learning how to read the filings first before using that stuff. It's good to know where that information is coming from. It's also good to know, like, what if that those guys don't have the most up-to-date information? Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to update all their stuff. Um, and if you have a situation like this, like MNPR, this was the first say it ever ran. This was the first, this was their IPO. Um, first say it ever ran, so a lot of those websites won't have um, information on brand new runners that look this one up at 925. Um, and you had to short it by 930, 931, especially this halted right here, 930. So like you had to short this really fast. So like you had maybe less than 10 minutes to uh, get all the information you needed and then shorting it. And I mean, look, this went from 12 all the way down to seven, right where it came from, previous close. Um, so yeah, purely relying on other people and services uh, can have downsides, right? And I'm saying they're useful tools, just know how to do the research yourself before you go use them. So. Um, BAM SEC, um, I have their premium service, which allows you to use this search function and also ungrays all these like um, report titles. Um, it's like 30 bucks a month. It's like the easiest, it's the most useful money I spend because um, I like doing a lot of my own digging. Uh, so this is MNPR. Um, and of course, with, if you want to find dilution ATMs uh, and that type of stuff, you can, you can dive into the most recent 10 Qs and then see uh, what's in there about at the market offerings and warrants and convertibles and all that stuff. Um, or you could click under 424s. I kind of like doing both. Um, sometimes if there's a 424 within the past six months, especially if it's within the past like three months, we'll see with a couple of these other plays. Um, I'll actually click on that first and read the dilution in there right away because it's so recent that it has it's going to have such a huge effect on the stock price, and then I'll go into the, the 10 Qs and, and see what's in there. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go to this 424 that's right at the top. Um, and if we read this, I, I kind of highlighted things ahead of time. So the first thing we see is an offering of 19.7 million from time to time. So this is like your first hint that this is an ATM. It says from time to time. Also, you don't see if this was like a normal stock offering, like an intraday or after hour stock offering, it would be like a little table down, I don't know why it's up there, down here that would give the offering details, but there's nothing like that. So I see offering price, 20 million almost from time to time, okay. Um, a big reason I wanna actually make this video is just because a company has an ATM doesn't mean they can use it. Um, Every company, especially the companies we trade, where they have tiny floats and tiny market caps are under certain restrictions about how much money um, they can raise through the market per year. So uh, the main rule that applies to ATMs is the baby shelf. So I would actually recommend go looking up, just Googling like SEC um, baby shelf, baby shelf restriction, baby shelf rules. Um, it's often tied to S3s or F3s. If you're a foreign company, this is an American company, so they have an S3, so this is an F S3 baby shelf restriction. Um, pretty much what it means is when a company wants to do an offering, um, they're restricted if by their public float. So when as traders, when we think about floats, we think about floats in terms of shares, right? Oh, this company has a 2 million share float, 5 million share float, but the SEC, in these companies, they think of floats in terms of dollar value, which um, in this case, the way it's calculated is you take the float in terms of number of shares um, and then you multiply it by the highest 
closing price um, within the past 60 days. So as we see right here, it says the aggregate market value of our common stock held by non-affiliates, so non-affiliates means the float, um, is 59.2 million. And that's based on 2.1 million shares held by non-affiliates. So their actual float is 2.1 million um, with a per price of $27 within the pad, which is based on um, this closing price of this date. So they took this public float, 2.1 million, multiplied it by 27, and they got um, 59.2 million in terms of their uh, public float at this time, at the time of this offering. Um, and then they're restricted by, uh, they can only raise, because this number is under 75 million, they can only raise uh, one third, which actually, I believe they say, yeah, right here, one third. They can only raise one third of this, which is about 20 million, which is what this ATM is for. So that's why this ATM equals 19.7, because this is one third of this, right? And then what you have to see is, have they diluted anything since then? Because they can only raise 19.7 million um, within one year. So a lot of times what you actually have to do is even if they have an ATM, so this was on January 13th, by the way, this play we're looking at is on August 12th. Um, you would have to see if there's any 424s that came after this that might have used some of this um, 59.2 million, which would actually decrease, even though they have a 19.7 million ATM, um, if they did another offering under this S3, which actually there's an SEC Edgar link down here. And if you click on, uh, if you click on the file number down here, it will show you the S3, it will show you the effect, and it will show you every 424 that's associated with it. So you could see how much of that S3 has been used in the past year. Um, so a lot of times you'll have companies with a $30 million ATM, but since they did like two or three offerings, so there'll be another 424, another 424, another 424, um, within the past 12 months under this S3, um, they won't be able to use that 30 million ATM. So they might have a 30 million ATM, doesn't mean they can use it, right? So that's, there's a lot of little details um, that you have to look out for. And this is why I really recommend spending the time to learn how to read through this stuff yourself. So you kind of have an idea of, of, okay, if I see an ATM, I see it's on this date. I'm like, okay, what have they done since this date? Are there any 424 since that date? I'm like, oh, there are no 424s since that date. Um, but another thing you gotta look out was this public float number actually changes based on the last 60 days of today. So this was, so this $27 is actually based off December 20th, 2019. But since this is August 12th, 2020, you can't use that highest closing price anymore. You have to use the highest closing price from um, from the past 60 days here, which I believe is one of these closing prices. It's probably um, this one or this one. So this is 9.5. This is 8.47. This is the 16th. That's the 12th. Yeah, so this would be the highest closing price, 9.5. Um, so you'd actually have to take 9.5, and then you would have to multiply it by however many shares they have um, in their public throat right now. Well, keep in mind, this ATM actually existed from January 1st. So this public flow number, 2.1 million, is probably bigger now. It probably increased. They probably tapped into it, even though they've had relatively really small volume since then. So they probably haven't tapped into it too much. Um, but this might be a little bigger. So you actually have to take this closing price of 9.5, multiply it by whatever the new float is, and then it's like, okay, um, and sometimes like the 10Q can give you an example. Let's see. So 10 million shares. This isn't the float, this is the OS. Um, as of this date, and I believe what I did is I went back and see if it was growing. So that's 10 point million shares as of this day. And I, I think I just kept going back to see like if there's actually any increase in their OS, which would give me an insight into if there was an increase in their float. It doesn't look like it. It seems like the, the OS kind of stayed the same. Grew by maybe like 100,000. So maybe the float's 100,000 bigger. Maybe they just tapped into that ATM a time because they haven't really done any other offerings 
So they probably tapped in like 100,000 shares of that ATM, which makes sense because they've had no volume. So they can only tap into the ATM if there's volume. So always remember that. They can only tap in if there's volume. So um, so this public vote is no longer uh, 50 million because this is a closing price of like a, like 10 months ago. Um, the new closing price is 9.5. So you can do like 2.2, that's the float, times 9.5. Um, so their new public float is 20 million, divide that by three. So they can raise about $7 million. So even though they have this 19.7 million ATM, they can only use about 7 million of it um, because that's how Baby Shelf works. Baby Shelf always works, which is this one, you can only raise one third of your float as long as it's under 75 million. Um, you're, you constantly have to take the highest closing price of the past 60 days and multiply it by whatever the current float is. But anyway, so they can raise about seven million under their ATM, which ain't bad, that's okay. Um, ain't like super high, especially at these prices, ain't super high. Um, but you're about to see that even without an absolutely huge massive ATM, so they can only use about seven million of it, um, if there's low volume, uh, it is enough to slam this down, just absolutely demolish this. So we, you get the pump, does like a very good technical setup. So this is an example of when the technicals line up with the fundamentals really well. Does your big push where a bunch of people chase, gets absolutely slammed back down. Very key indicator that um, they're selling new shares into this volume. Um, also anybody that kind of bought up here is also selling shares. So it's like profit takers from the pump and then um, also uh, shorts and also dilution sending this down. Um, and what's great about ATM plays is not only is there almost no bounces <laughs> um, on the way down, but also uh, they tend to go to where they came from. These are one of the few plays that'll actually go directly to the, to the previous close. Um, and we'll see that in every single one of these charts. Um, so the rain, I mean, the, the profit potentials, even if you chased, even if you chased all the way down here, that's 11 to, um, you know, seven, seven fifty eight dollars um, and that's straight up like you would you would have got there by ten o'clock, right? So, um, so that's a kind of a very detailed first example of reading the SEC filings, understanding how baby shelf restriction works, how to flow. Oh, by the way, a lot of people think, um, oh, don't fl don't short stocks under two million float, right? We always people always say that, right? Like you can't short stocks. 2 million under 2 million, 3 million, um, especially if it's like 1.5, 1 million, can't, can't short those, right? Because it's too dangerous. They can, they can pop on thin air, right? <laughs> they're, they're like, and a lot of times it's told by like, like these like chat room gurus who, um, a lot of those guys, I think a lot of them mean well, but they're trying to give general, like general advice to people, right? Um, and also, a lot of those chat room guys don't know anything about fundamentals. <laughs> like, they don't know anything about how like ATM action actually works. But also, they're trying to give general advice because they're talking. You know, a lot of people pay attention to them, so they're talking to a massive group of people and they're trying to like give advice that applies to the vast majority of situations. Um, and in, in many cases, you don't want to be shorting two million, three million float stocks. Uh, One hundred percent true. But I will say, we'll see with another example, including this one, that even on a two million float stock. Um, Two million flow stocks with an ATM or dilution fade extremely hard, extremely hard. <laughs> like they, like they are the nastiest, nastiest fades. Um, and the reason is actually really interesting, is because remember, if a company is tapping into an ATM, their float is constantly growing, which means they're creating new back holders out of shares they didn't need to buy to begin with. So it's it's not only do you have the back holders who chased here, but you also have the back holders who um, are buying the new shares of the float. The float is constantly growing, so they're buying those new shares. So there's like, um, so there's constantly, a constantly growing float and constantly new, more and more back holders. So the float's going from like 2.1 million to 2.2 million to 2.3 million to 2.4, and it's just like, it's straight selling pressure out of new shares and no one needs to, like no one needs to buy here and sell later. They're just, it's, the ATM is constant selling. 
So that's why you get these like extremely nasty, nasty ATM fades. Um, let's go to another example. U O N E. Again, uh, I like this example because it also combines. Um, what day was this? Oh, here we go. Market psychology, right? So U O N E was a play. Um, float was 1.5 million. That went from like, you know, <laughs> like what did it go from? Two dollars to 54. So when this stock starts popping again, people think the same thing is going to happen all over again. People like to think previous action dictates what's going to happen today, which is really stupid because there's a bunch of reasons why that's absolutely not true in so many ways. It's kind of like how when SPI popped, SPI popped a week ago, and again, everyone's so afraid of SPI because I remember what happened on um, the crazy black swan day where it went from one to 46, right? So people get really afraid and also longs get very bold, right? And you can use that market psychology against them in ideal situations like this, right? So you want to, again, um, this popped right at 7 a.m. Tons of volume came in um, and it's up like 200%. And everyone remembers what happened last time. It's like, oh, don't touch this. Uh, you know, a lot of short sellers got burned the first time this ran and they think, oh, like, that's a stock you don't touch. You never know. Like, this could go up to 40 again. I'm not going to tell you. I'm like, okay. Like, the only thing that tells me is that there's less short sellers in this play, <laughs> which is good. Um, believe it or not, the less shorts that are participating in a play, the more bearish the stock is. Not less. The, the more bearish a stock is when there's less shorts in a play. And that's because, simply because, there's less. A, the majority of the selling pressure in any situation is not from short sellers ever, 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 ever. The stock market is not a game of longs versus shorts ever, 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 ever. The, the stock market is a game of the people manipulating the stock for their own often nefarious needs and retail. So people with big pockets versus retail, that's what the stock market is. It is not longs versus shorts. It's not like this got to the top and the short sellers overcame the longs and it went like, that is absolutely not what happened at all <laughs> in this situation, not even a little bit. Um, so, you know any, again, 1.5 million float, right? Don't short 1.5 million floats, right? Super dangerous. Um, even though this went from 12 and it faded all the way back to market open, right? 12 to four, right? Nasty 75% fade. Um, a lot of people think this isn't predictable. A lot of people think you're playing with fire in this, in this situation. But again, let's go to Yoani's um, filings. So this was on 825. And when I open the filings, the first thing I see is a 424 for 818. So one week before this, there's a 424. So I immediately click that. I'm like, what is this? Like, what did they do a week ago? Um, what, what type of offering did they do a week ago that's causing this? And the first thing I see is $25 million um, at the market offering. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> this is, if you get a super recent ATM that's like, especially if it's a week old, uh, but especially, or even if it's like two or three months old, um, it's so bearish. It's super bearish. It is, it is, uh, it is amazing because this or super recent ATM means a couple of things. A, they're looking to raise money, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't have filed this 424 in this ATM, right? They're, they're, they filed this ATM and they're looking to use it. Um, the other thing is, since this ATM is only a week old, I know they they haven't used it yet, right? They haven't used like almost any of it yet. Um, it's brand new, and the odds are they haven't tapped into any of it. And also, the odds are if they did a 25 million ATM, then um, Usually when they set up an ATM, getting back to the baby shelf restriction, they will set up the ATM to meet the maximum amount they can raise under the baby shelf restriction. So um, it pretty much tells me like they can use this entire thing. So it's, a, it's like a 25 million ATM that they can use. And what's interesting about UNE is that it's a 1.5 million float stock, right? So 1.5, because UONE, their class A shares are trade under UONE, and UONEK is their class D shares. So, um, but we're gonna focus on, but the ATM is actually, if you read this, it's actually tied to the class A shares. That's how I know it's um, for UONE. I think it's with baby shelf restriction. Usually, if a stock has a really tiny float in terms of number of shares, like 1.5 million, then if their most recent closing price is, let's say uh, $4, that means their entire public float is 
six million dollars, and they can only raise uh, a third of that, which means they can only raise two million, right? Which is usually so. Usually, companies with really tiny, tiny floats in terms of number of shares cannot raise a lot because the baby shelf restriction is so restrictive um, that they really can't dilute. But UONE is special because it ran all the way to uh, 54, right? And the highest close price within the last 60 days of this is actually like, it's not this, this is actually more than 60 days. It's actually somewhere around here. It's one of these numbers. It's like 20, it's like, yeah, I think it's like this maybe, 20, 20.5. Um, I think this is the highest closing price in the past 60 days. It might be one of these. It's one of these numbers. 20 to like 25. So that changes things. And then if their float is 1.5 and let's say it's 25, then they can raise a third of that, which is 12.5 million, which is still, which is a good amount. Like they're able, they're able to raise because their closing price in the past 60 days is so high. So, um, this is an example, like many ATM shorts where it actually dies in the pre-market. Most ATM shorts die in the pre-market. And we're going to see that with two other examples that happened this week. Um, so you have this crazy, crazy pump. By the way, no news. No news. So 7 a.m. pump. No news. And by the way, this pattern actually works in a pre-market even without an ATM. So it goes up 100% hard crack. Um, in, in this case, like, no joke, I would just size into this. Because this, like, like if there's enough volume... Um, like 100% parabolics with huge cracks in the pre-market often fade, even without ATMs. And then you have key indicators like the one minute nine. So a lot of people have been following me. You know I'm a big fan of moving averages um, in the pre-market. Moving averages often push on the one minute nine, which is why you see this here, this here, this here. But once you get crazy extension and a huge, huge, massive crack, see this biggest red candle, um, the one minute nine will be confirmation going down along with like the one minute 20 in VWAP. Like, but it's a lot of the push downs, as you see uh, this purple line, like meets the one minute. So one minute nine, one minute 20 in VWAP all meet here and just gets rejected. Um, if this rejects, that's confirmation of an even bigger fade combined with the ATM. So, um, but you could do starters up here. And then once, once it starts rejecting the one minute nine, I could just, um, keep adding, and then once, especially right here, I could just keep adding. So I know that ATM and the, dilu and the dilution is on. So this is just another example of, again, 1.5 million float. A lot of people would be scared. Fades all the way to where it came from. It came from 4.2, went all the way down to 4.2. Um, what's interesting about ATM shorts is a lot of times, even if they're already down this much, and we'll see this on the other plays, um, you can actually short it market open, it, as long as the volume's not too high. Uh, believe it or not, there's actually still, like, look at this. This is, this opened at um, 6.5. You're like, wow, this, this is already down 70%. Like, why would I add into my short here? But the truth is, as long as the volume isn't really big, which it wasn't, it was like a 200,000 shares, like, that's really low. Like, this is, like, not even breaking 300,000 shares. Um, it'll keep, it'll fade all the way down to 4.2, like, to where it came from. So there's still, like, <laughs> there's still, like, a 25, 30% win um, even if you miss this big move, unlike big ATM shorts. So uh, that's your uh, one one What are the other ones I have? Oh, okay. Here, here are the recent ones. This is ASLN. The only thing that sucked about this play was that there were no shares of short. So uh, we just kind of got fucked. Okay. Um, oh, this was actually from Friday, the 16th, October 16th. Again, we have another ATM short. Um, so um, you always have to wait. A, at most brokers, you can't locate shares until 7 o'clock anyways. Um, and you always want to wait for the 7 a.m. action because 7 a.m. action is always way, way bigger than um, anything that came before 6. But you see, 1.89. Um, does a really ideal pattern, actually. This is a great, like, intraday pattern where it's higher high. So this is the first high. So a high of day clear out, which means it breaks high of day, gets rejected. Another high day clear out gets rejected. It kind of shows when you see, like, these constant, like, breaks a high, gets rejected, breaks a high, gets rejected. It's because the manipulator is constantly um, um, flushing out longs and getting, and flushing out shorts and getting longs to chase and selling into those people. So they accumulate down here pushes up here, 
a bunch of people are chasing, shorts are covering, he, he flushes, of course this, um, this pattern works much better after 7 in the morning and, and also an intraday, but this followed the same pattern even though this initial push was in the 6.30 to 7 a.m. range. Um, so ASLN, another example of, this was from October 16th, this ATM is from October 9th, so this, again, ATM one week old, one week old. Um, and uh, again, 7.5 million, which at this price point is actually pretty good. This is only in the threes, so that's a you know, couple million shares, which by the way, diluting a couple million shares is really difficult. Um, like even if the stock traded 40 million shares on the day, two million shares of dilution is actually a lot. <laughs> like you would not believe how hard it is to actually dump two million shares of brand new shares that aren't on the market. It's super dilutive. Um, and it has a big effect on stock price. Uh, but in this case, the volume wasn't high, just like EONE, just like MNPR, um, ATM shorts with uh, low volume um, are great. They're just awesome. Just too bad this, this didn't have shares to borrow. Um, actually, I think there were shares to borrow once it got down here. And knowing what I know about ATM shorts, I should have just taken it, but there's a part of me, there's a part of me that always hates missing the ideal entry. And I think like, like, okay, like higher high, clear out, high, clear out, high day, clear out. Then you get the lower high, hard crack below VWAP and below um, the one minute nine and the, and the one minute 20. And again, we get this overlap right here. It pushes straight into it and then gets rejected. A pretty good volume. This is trading like, 80,000 shares at $3. Like, of course, in the pre-market, you're not going to be able to, um, A, you have to use limit orders, and B, um, like, you're not going to be able to size in, like, unless the volume is really, really insane. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you get really insane volume in the pre-market, especially nowadays. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be hard to size in, you know, 50,000, 75,000 shares in the pre-market on a play like this, but it doesn't matter. Like, you can size in, like, 5,000 shares, and look, it went from 350 to uh 190 <laughs> so so uh i mean do you want you know seven thousand eight thousand dollars <laughs> on a really predictable play um i mean i do so okay uh 7 a.m gets a big high to clear out push does the lower high cracks really hard rejects this atm dilution is on um another big thing uh this is the five minute nine. This is the five minute 20. It'll often ride the five minute nine, especially once the five minute 20 overlaps. The five minute 20 becomes like, um, because a lot of times on these bounces, it'll bounce to the five minute nine, reject it, bounce into five minute nine, reject it, but it might do a second wave. So here's the first wave to the five minute nine. It'll do a second wave to the five minute 20, then get rejected there, and then go back on the five minute nine, which is what happened here. Um, big fan of moving averages. You'll see the same. Uh, You'll see the same bounces to the same areas over and over and over again. Um, it's good to study. Good, good to take a lot of screenshots of. I like using this as the the nine EMA, twenty EMA, fifty, and uh, two hundred, um, one minute and five minute. That's what I like to use. Uh, you can try using your own stuff. I know a lot of people like using the thirteen, and a lot of people like using like the hundred. It's up to you. Like just back test, see see what you like. Um, but yeah, again, another ATM short. Um, uh, fades all the way down to uh, where it came from. So that was from Friday. Uh, and then the last play, which is from today, which I did short and got a pretty, pretty good amount of it, but I kind of broke my rules on sizing out. Um, kind of wanted to take my winnings early uh, and I missed out on a huge chunk of it. Um, M R I N. So this is <laughs> this is interesting because of what's happening right now. So I'm recording this as the market is going right now. Um, this is this is uh, this is the crazy type of value manipulation we're seeing in um, the market the past couple of weeks. Just insane, crazy manips, insane, crazy times. But however, it still followed up until the point where the stock found the seven dragon balls and revived itself and came, you know, <laughs> and it started doing this crazy, crazy thing. Um, uh, it followed the ATM pattern perfectly. So let's go to MRAN. Uh, their ATM is from uh, May, so five months ago. 
um, 13 million. Again, their float as of the day of this offering was 40 million, which is why this is 13. 13 is a third of this. This is based off of 5.5 million shares of their, so this is how big their float is. Their highest closing price of 718. Um, MRN. A, we have to find out did the float grow since then, and B, we also have to find out what's the highest closing price of the past 60 days. So this is 1021. We go back to like 821, right? And highest closing price seems to be around like um, like 1.5, which actually means like the amount of this ATM they can use is actually pretty low. But again. If the volume is pretty low and the technical pattern shows itself in the pre-market, um, it could still be really good. Uh, it could still like, and it could still fade really hard, which is pretty much what happened. Um, so they're able to, uh, again, we have this insane like six a, six a.m. action, which the stock goes from like uh, one to eight. And by the way, usually when this this is bearish in in and of itself, <laughs> like when a stock randomly goes from like one point six to eight in the pre-market. Um, uh, we've seen this happen. I'm trying to remember the ticker where this happened recently, but um, there's some ticker that had dilution, that had insane warrants. What was that play? It was from like two or three weeks ago. Um, it had insane warrants and it went from like three to 30. And then by seven in the morning, it was at 14. And then it fell all the way to six because the warrants were like at seven or six dollars. So it, it fell like 50%. Um, that was it. I'll, I'll try to look that one up. I can't, it starts with an A, I think. Um, but yeah, actually, let me look that up because it, it's an interesting play and also applies to this situation. So, um, is this not loading? So I have a master chart file of. These are all the stocks that gapped up um, 40%. And I take screenshots of every single one of them. <laughs> the one minute and the, uh, um, now where is that play? The one minute and the five minute charts with all my MAs on it. So this is how I study all my charts. Um, I also do this with intraday runners. So stocks that go up in the intraday with the no, um, very little pre-market action or oftentimes no pre-market action. What is, where is that stock? I'm pretty sure it's in here. It's on WWR. I swear to God it's in here. <laughs> is this it? No. But kind of an example, <laughs> went from six to 15. And usually if you see some crazy pair, it never reaches back up here. This is essentially the point I'm trying to make if I can find it, that play. Oh, yes, I found it. <laughs> APM. Um, 1 to 30, opened at 7 a.m. at 13. Uh, great pre-market short. Um, I was in South Korea at the time, so I couldn't short this because I wasn't trading. But there are a billion warrants at $7, which actually makes this, again, kind of like my other videos I covered, um, dilution shorts in the pre-market. Uh, PS TV was an example from like three months ago. Um, Actually, could have shorted at 13 to 14, fell all the way to 7. Gave this BS little push, which is like, has no hope of surviving, reshort it. Um, and then fell to the 1 minute 200 and eventually fell to the 5 minute 200. But yeah, point is, whenever you see crazy pushes like this, it's pretty much inherently super bearish because there's no hope of it ever reaching back up there. The question is, where do you get in? So, um, pushes up here, crazy parabolic. We're waiting for seven in the morning to show itself because I'm very interested in what's happening at seven. Seven in the morning comes, big volume that's pushing. I'm like, oh, great, great. I mean, odds of it coming back here are super low. I mean, I hope it breaks this because that just makes it a better short for later. But um, 
gives a big push and then like insane like 20% crack. And at this time, MIRN, the shares were um, 70 cents. So I did not reserve any shares. And I would have totally loved, again, here's that one minute nine, one minute uh, 20, and then the VWAP. This is huge resistance, especially after a big crack like this. And after this action combined with the ATM that they can they, that they could definitely tap into. Um, it's not super huge because of their baby shelf restriction, but they can definitely use it. Um, and it gets hard rejected here, cracks again. And at this point, I'm always a little bit afraid because it cracked white to the five minute 20. And if you ever like, if you ever start tracking the five minute charts, um, you'll notice a lot of algos and manipulators will use the 5 minute 20 as support before pushing this back up again. And this float was like 5 million, so you know if, if they wanted to t take control of the stock, they could if they wanted to. But showing insane weakness, insane weakness. Um, I waited for this 5 minute 9 test. So it's coming up to test the 5 minute 9. Because now it's in like this 5 minute 20, 5 minute 9 channel. And since I just know how heavily manipulated the 5 minute 20 is, I'm like, okay, let me see what the reaction is to this five minute nine. And we go back to the one minute. It comes up here, gets rejected here. Gets rejected here, cracks, and then I size into this bounce. Um, actually, no, the five minute 20 was here. So it cracks the five minute 20 here. So it tests the five minute nine, it's still on the channel, cracks it, and then I size into this bounce. I size in right here at 4.5. So I had a 4.5 average. Um, and I pretty much knew the odds of it, like my risk level was actually like right above the five minute 20. Like it was at this point, I know it's super low odds that it, it, it's going to come back up here. Um, so like probably this orange line is the one minute 50, which is also roughly equivalent to the five minute nine. So my risk level is going to be somewhere up here. I would have to see a lot of strength on the tape, a lot of support, a lot of bid manipulation, and then pushing to like key levels that I know shouldn't be broken. Um, so, uh, we got, we got an inherently bearish tentacle pattern plus the ATM that you can tap. Um, finally got some shares, falls to the one minute 200, take out a lot of my profits here. Uh, but for some reason I broke my rules that I know as stocks fade, usually when stocks fade, they'll never break the five minute 20. As soon as the five minute 20 support breaks, the five minute 20 becomes the resistance. So um, you might get like little tiny wicks above it like this, but as long as it closes um, below the five minute 20, the five minute 20 EMA um, is really, really strong on fades, is really strong on fades. But some reason I got like antsy, I kind of wanted to take my profits, I don't know, like um, I just kind of broke my rules, which kind of sucks because like I got in at 4.5, um, this was down to 3.4 and I'm like, oh cool, like that's a nice gain, I'll, I'll take my profits there and then uh, broke my rule, didn't, you know, it didn't break, I should have actually got back in once I saw it uh, rejecting the 5 minute 20. Should have just got back in, and then fell all the way to 1.9. So I could have gotten in at 4.5 after the uh, 5 minute 20 was confirmed rejecting, and the 5 minute 9 was in control, and rolled it all the way down to where it closed. So this closed at actually at like 1.5. But down here, the volume's getting really, really low. So I'll start when it's when it's getting this slow, I would have taken out most of my profits anyways. And then it again, it like somehow found insane strength out of nowhere, and I would have taken the rest out as it like broke the one uh, five minute um, two hundred. Once it started climbing here, I would have just gotten out because um, I'm like, okay, that's unusual. <laughs> like it's, we we already saw four ATM charts today, and the other three didn't do this. Like the other three don't get massive volume candles that are bigger than market opens candles out of nowhere, right? So. Um, but yeah, it was a nice win. It was overall nice win. I kind of wish shares were available sooner. Um, kind of had to wait a little bit and then, um, kind of like just classic ATM play that goes all the way that back down pretty much to where it came from. Actually it came down to like this high, I guess, but whatever, like it, it pretty much came down all the way. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped. Uh, just remember if you see an ATM, you always have to do the baby shelf restriction calculation. Um, this is assuming again, go read up on how. S3 baby shelf rules work. Um, you know, what restrictions the SEC has, how you do those calculations. I kind of already explained it. Um, and then always keep an eye out for other 424s because 
uh, that are associated with this S3. Like I said, you could go to the SEC's website, you could click on the file number, you could see all the 424s associated with that S3. Um, you could see how much the baby shelf is left. That lets you know how much of the ATM they can use. And you can use that to determine how many shares they, they can dilute. And then you could compare that to the technical patterns, like bearish technical patterns, bullish technical patterns. You can compare that to the volume, to the tape, to key indicators, like moving averages that I like to use. Like, okay, like you're kind of just putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. And then um, hopefully you don't pike like I do and take profits after, you know, a dollar and you could get another, you know, dollar and a half out of it <laughs> and make more money. But yeah, somehow this like found insane volume later in the day. Again, this is just like the crazy world we live in. Oh, by the way, I do want to show you an example of an ATM short that um, I don't have the filings open for this one, but you can just take my word for it. Um, Sava. Sava at, what day is this? 9.14? So this is actually, Sava actually had a huge ATM, but um, found insane volume, insane volume. Um, What's interesting about Saba is they, A, their market cap's not as low as the other place we're, we've been looking at. Um, and when you get higher market caps, you also tend to get more institutions looking at the company, um, thinking the company's a little better than the usual trash we're shorting, and that could lead to institutional accumulation, which is super bullish. <laughs> they like to buy dips and push the stock back up, which is actually kind of why... Um, you know, Savo was kind of going on this like big choppy run where like it keeps getting pushed up and pushed up. Um, would not be surprised if some big players have been accumulating and moving the stock price up. But Savo is interesting in a way that it popped the Friday before because they said, "Hey, we're going to have a conference call on Monday. We're we're going to release some good news, um, and we're going to do it at like eight o'clock in the morning." So it pushes an AH. And then what's really interesting is 7 a.m. is right here. 7 a.m., it starts showing weakness, right? Not a lot of volume, but it starts showing weakness. And a lot of short sellers saw the ATM for Sava. Let's see if we can find it. Um, is it this? Yes. 100 million ATM play. Sounds pretty uh and that that that, that and the, uh Saba is not under the baby shelf restriction, so they can use all of this. And again, pops up. Also it kinda has a history of popping and fading. Like it's definitely ran in the past. Don't know why this isn't loading. Kicker Swim has kind of been taking a big shit today. <laughs> um okay, maybe it's not loading. Oh great. Now I can't even I can't even show you. Um, the chart. Huh. Anyways, kind of the point was um, it was extremely unusual because on Friday they released a PR saying, hey, we're going to release, we're going to have a conference call releasing good news in the pre-market on Monday. So you knew that the conference call was coming. And if you know a conference call is coming, which a lot of companies will do this, um, you can't take a short, even if there's a hundred million dollar ATM right here, because um, I know some, I know some traders. Not going to name any names, but there's some traders that shorted this, thinking um, again, let's not be hindsight bias here, thinking that okay, this is up. Sava is kind of a known turd. It's not super great. Also, I think the market was kind of slow at this time. Like this was September 11th. I think the beginning of September was really slow, so people were getting really bored. Um, like, oh, let me just take an ATM short. You know, a lot of those tend, like, a lot of people that know fundamentals know they tend to fade to where they came from. So maybe they could just take a short at seven in the morning here in the fours. They'll fade to the threes and, you know, it'll be like a nice little win. But they told you, like, hey, we're having a conference call releasing good news. Like, they said that on Friday. And you have to wait for that conference call, which is why it got halted, news halted right here. As you see, it goes from 709 to 745 at the bottom of my screen. So 30 minute news halt. Uh, turns out their Alzheimer drug had some positive phase two trials, um, and uh, 
that caused a bunch of buying. A, a bunch of, uh, 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 any short that got in here, in here is getting squeezed, and then you got all the algos and people who are buying the news, right, and they squeeze the stock up. Um, and this is a good example of, even if there's 100 million ATM, and even if this gets squeezed 80%, um, you have to you have to always follow the technicals, right? Just because there's an ATM doesn't mean automatic short on the f first pullback, um, especially with companies like Saba, whose fundamentals are fundamentally different than, you know, MRIN or UONE or ASLN or MNPR, like totally different companies um, that can have different price action, right? And by the way, if this was an ATM short, it would have cracked here formed this lower high and then fell. Like it would have, would have, it would have cracked VWAP, it would have cracked the one minute 20, and it, it would have fell. But as soon as you see like 15, 20 minutes of just, just constant bid support on good volume, like this is really heavy volume for the, uh, the pre-market. You know, this is 100,000 shares a minute at $6 in the pre-market with, with solid support forming and, 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 uh, you know, really strong level two and tape. And even if you shorted this, even with a hundred million ATM, like that does not give you a reason to keep adding as it goes up and, and uh, keep moving your stop loss up. And okay, this has to come down. That ATM is going to kick in. Um, wait for the huge pullback. Wait for the, the insane crack. Wait for the confirmation amongst, you know, this is clearly falling to one minute nine, one minute 20 is down here is support. If you put the five minute, it's following, uh, loosely following the five minute, even though the five minute nine is not as useful in the pre-market because the pre-market's moving too fast that it can't keep up, it, which is why you want to use the one minute moving averages. But yeah, once you see the insane hard cracks and then here's like, here's where a lot of times when the one minute 20 and the five, when the one minute 20 crosses over the five minute nine, um, that only happens on like clear signs of backside, backside action. Um, you know, you could take the short over here. Maybe you're thinking, okay, maybe they're tapping into the ATM now after the clear trend reversal, right? And the clear, like, following the key MAs down as the stock goes down. But then you always have to keep it, like, this volume's nuts. Like, this is 2 million shares a minute. Like, the other plays we even we saw today, like, market open was, like, 300 shares a minute, you know, and it faded. It would, it would trade 200, 300, 400,000 shares, and it just fade, fade, fade all the way down. This when it's trading one million, one million shares a minute, like is not even, like an ATM can only overcome so much, especially if it's consistent, right? It finds support, starts bouncing back up the VWAP, starts bouncing back up, and then hard breaks it. Like um, this is not normal, right? This is this is not the value you, you want to see. You you want insane dilution, and ATM is one of the best forms of dilution because they get diluted at any time in low volume. You want both of those together. You don't want crazy insane volume on a higher market cap type of play. Um, by the way, a lot of higher market caps, you know, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million dollar companies will have ATMs that they'll tap into, but it won't crash their stock like, you know, the, sh the other companies like we just talked about, where their market caps might be like 20 million or 30 million or 50 million. Um, the higher the market cap, you might see like, uh, oh, JNCE was another ATM. Here's another, um, God, when was this play? Was it here? Yeah. Nine one. This is another large market cap ATM play, where um, you know spikes two hundred percent gives like the really nice pullback and, and clear VWAP rejection and again a huge ATM not not a bad play. Um, does kind of like your manipulated high a day pushes gives a hard crack fades a little bit but like you're not going to see the same. Like it's not these higher market cap ATMs are not going to fall all the way down to uh, previous previous close, um, like you see with all the ones we talked about. So just giving you pr some perspective. Not all ATMs are the exact same. Um, there's many other factors that come into play besides the fact that you looked at the filings, you saw that there was an ATM, you calculated the baby shelf restriction, and then you're you're kind of forming a thesis of what could happen, um, what price action could happen. But you're always keeping an eye on all the other things, right? Um, the technicals, the volume, um, the other fundamentals, you know, institutions, uh, you know, bid manipulation, tape rating, support, all that stuff. So kind of putting it all together. Um, hope that was helpful. Uh, ATM shorts are really cool. They fade super hard. If it's an ideal play, you can make 50, 60, 70%. Um, a lot of times you have to size in in the pre-market. Um, you have to hope there's shares. You have to hope the shares are cheap. You have to hope the right technical pattern shows up. Um, but when all the stars align, uh, 
even if you're only sizing in a couple thousand shares, you know, you could size in a couple thousand shares and the stock can fade three, four, five dollars. So it's nice, nice, nice money. <laughs> nice money, even though your size, oh, my, I, I can only size in five or 10 grand. I'm like, yeah, but if, if it falls 60%, that's a, that's good money for and you'd even have to risk a lot <laughs> like you were just risking you, you had you have a five grand position size like you're, what are you risking like like 500 bucks to make 2500 on a pretty high odds play um that's always nice i like it when that happens so anyways hope that was helpful let me know what you think i'll try to do more videos i thought this one would be cool because we saw a couple examples of it happen today or this week so yeah let me know see you